Hello friends, I am Dr. Amit Ahuja, Assistant Professor from University School of Education, Guru Gobind Singh Indraprastha University, Dwarka, Delhi. Today we are going to deliberate about cognitivism as an approach to learning. What cognitivism is, what cognition is, is a thing to deliberate upon. Cognitivism emerged as a response to behaviorism that focused upon behavior as ultimate things and that is an environment that compels us to respond. And there is nothing like structure like mind. So we are just animals then, but the reality is not so. We are more than an animal and the cognition of the cognitivism assumes so. So that today's presentation that's cognitivism as an approach to learning focuses on that. What cognitivism is ultimately? The cognitivism focuses on all mental processes that include how does an individual think, perceive, learn, remember, solve the problems and direct attention to one stimuli than another. In a nutshell for all of them I would like to say that all the mentalistic events are subsumed under cognitivism starting right from the thinking. Thinking discriminates between a living one and a non-living one. So if an individual is able to think the first, circum first criteria that the person is living has been overcome. But what is the perception of the person towards the world or towards the event? How do we perceive is another criteria that is that's of paramount importance. Through that perception, through that thinking, how do we learn? So is learning dependent upon certain structures that is mentalistic in nature that facilitate an individual to respond? Then are we able to remember over a period of time because it requires retrieval recognition also? And then of course, is the individual to solve the problem because as per Gagne, the, high, the highest form of learning is problem solving. And if an individual is able to solve a problem, then highest learning has taken place on his her part. What is a problem? Simply anything that disturbs an individual is a problem. Just like that 2 plus 5 is equal to question mark is a problem for a first grade child, nursery child, let it be. But 2 plus 5 is equal to question mark is a problem if a problem for a 10th class child then it is not a problem it is a disaster then. And if a problem cannot be solved then ultimately it is not a problem problem must be solvable because only that the person's mentalistic effort, mental efforts will be fruitful otherwise it leads to disappointment and hence the person does not take interest in that event over a, period of, over a period of time because it cannot be solved. So problem must be solvable. And then it directs attention to one stimuli then another because if we respond to all stimuli we will lose our mental balance. How is possible for a person to respond to all these stimuli in a room or outside? Not possible. So we get focused. So that comprises an important aspect of cognitivism. Cognitivism, as I said earlier, emerged in response to behaviorism. Yes, we have definite structure. We are bounded by certain society. We have certain degree of thinking. We have experiences. We have perception. We learn at our own rate because we are human beings that cognitivism characterizes us so. Then after that cognition comprises the process of assimilation and accommodation and they lead to cognitive development as cognitive structures get developed over a period of time. In this domain the information processing theory, Piaget theory of cognitive development laid a powerful foundation for cognitivism that the cognitive structures these are the schemata that an individual has available to respond interact with physical environment because for an individual to grow there must be a an optimum cognitive apparatus with certain degree of maturation when this combination takes place that's cognitive apparatus and maturation then we say the cognitive development of the individual takes place so that cognitive development leads to over a period of time certain cognitive structures. These are the schemata. What schemata? That's a basic building block of thinking. That, that's it. 
दे कैन नॉट बी डाइसेक्टेड दे कैन नॉट बी सीन फिजियोलॉजिकली इन ऑपरेशन दीज आर मेंटल स्ट्रक्चर्स दैट हैव बीन लॉजिकली एज्यूम टू यू वर्किंग इन द पर्सनैलिटी ऑफ ए पर्सन एंड द स्कीमेट ऑफ दैट कैन इंडिविजुअल हैज अवेलेबल वॉट कॉग्नेटिव स्ट्रक्चर इज अवेलेबल विद ए पर्सन टू रेस्पॉन्ड येस दैट्स वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट इफ द पर्सन डजेंट हैव दैट कॉग्नेटिव स्ट्रक्चर द पर्सन वोट बी एबल टू रेस्पॉन्ड and hence there is no then there won't be no question of interaction also so the two things are very important responding and interaction but these are feasible if and only if we have cognitive structure pertaining to that event in the environment then after that assimilation uh, an important aspect of cognitism that is responding to physical environment with existing cognitive structures and it can be equated roughly with knowing recognition that's a lower form of learning assimilation that is we respond to the world outside with whatever cognitive structure do i have and these cognitive structure might have emerged definitely they have emerged because of past experiences so do those past experiences help me support me to meet the recent environmental events outside right now if they are then i have sufficient or compatible cognitive structures otherwise not so assimilation helps us to knowing recognition only accommodation that's modification of cognitive structures as a result of an experience which could not be assimilated into existing cognitive structure and it can be roughly equated with learning yes for accommodation to take place we need certain degree of modification into our existing structure because the present structure that means the present bed of that cognitive structure could not imbibe the new one so there must be certain degree of modification to take into that then after that another aspect of uh, cognitivism is attention what's attention it's uh, the ability of an individual to focus and it helps the individual to work of work on the efforts the person is conducting work out the actions and take interest in the things going on that's attention if you don't attend you will lose interest and if you don't have if you don't have interest you won't attend the things run together like this so efforts action and interest influence the attention over a period of time if you put your best efforts do more efforts you will be able to attend but somewhere you where you will be having interest in that and uh, another thing that is of importance is that according to information processing theory as i said earlier like vaje also memory and attention are central to learning because if there is no memory there is no attention there is no learning so memory also works well when we attend the things properly and attention requ- attention requires certain degree of focus and that focus is catalyzed is promoted when we have interest in that in generally when we say in hindi man nahi lagta padhne mein agar man lagta hai padhne mein to aapka dhyan to lag hi jayega so that's a interest that is of paramount paramount importance to promote attention and attention leads to cognitive development because we keep on growing our mental structures then after that cognitivism and learning learning as per this domain is growth of cognitive structure and acquisition of knowledge we see we keep on growing our cognitive structure but there is no acquisition of knowledge just like adults they have sufficient cognitive apparatus but they they might not have inter- undergone interaction with the environment no acquisition of knowledge the person has acquisition of knowledge but no growth of cognitive structure that means the person has undergone cramming the person can say i am knowledgeable up to a particular moment during examination what generally students say so but since they don't have definite cognitive structure so they forget over a period of time so the two things are very important that cognitive structures must grow and there must be acquisition of knowledge learning focuses on uh, with respect to cognitivism is how is information received how do you receive that how do you perceive that how do you attend that what do you do with that that's it then how attention is processed that information is processed that means what logical faculty or faculty pertaining to reasoning you apply for that 
because certain degree of logic, reasoning, etc. work in our personality. To what extent we promote them. Then under how information is organized. Organization here means presentation of the information in an organized manner by the teacher as well as when the person learns, takes into the memory, that must be also in an organized manner. If there is incompatibility between the two, there may not be successful memorization and hence retrieval also. Learning also focuses on how the learner retrieves the information. We generally prefer our students to retrieve verbatim. But we forget that they are humans, they are not human machines. Yes, retrieval means successful retrieval in a comprehensive way that a person is able to retrieve me the essential component, essential concepts, important concepts, etc. and give them me a suitable linkage between them. Hence, I can say that the person has definite cognitive structure pertaining to that concept. Then I can infer that successful retrieval has taken place because there might have been successful memorization. So that these aspects must be looked into. Another aspect associated with cognitism and learning is that memory plays a crucial role in storing. Because if you don't store, there is no question of it. And that storing must be done meaningfully and in an organized way. Meaningfully means the person must be able to link it, join it, associate it with some already existing information. If the person is not able to meaningfully do so, it will be lost in vacuum. Then cognitism and teaching requires that teachers need to provide the information in an organized way. That is, they must present this uh, from simple to complex, concrete to abstract, known to unknown, etc. But generally, we jump to abstract, complex, and unknown aspects. So, how learning will take place? You see, previous knowledge of a person may come from three aspects. When that we do in BI teaching plans, etc., when we address the previous knowledge of the learner, that the learner are supposed to have this much previous knowledge. The source of that previous knowledge might be that things might have been learned in previous standard. For example, in the seventh class, if there is chapter on metal and non-metal, the same chapter comes in class 10th. So that means in, for a class 10 student, the chapter might have been read, learned in seventh standard. So that may form a basis of previous knowledge. Another base of knowledge might be as per the teaching done in previous classes by the teacher. For example, in ninth class, when there is there are chapter like states of matter, chemical bonding, atomic structure, etc. So these things run cohesively in a synchronized manner. So the teacher may say, if we are studying structure of atom, then since we have read the states of matter, so there are bright chances that the student may have a rationalistic degree of previous knowledge also. The third source of previous knowledge might be, since the thing may be a matter of day-to-day -day experience like um, environment, air, water, pollution, etc. And a person is supposed to be vigilant also, even our student also. So that may also form a base of previous knowledge also. So teachers should look into that, these three aspects, how the information is being presented and how we are assuming that the learner has this much previous degree of knowledge. And if you don't assume that previous degree of knowledge, you are just giving them new and new things and the person might not be able to link it with that. Teachers should facilitate the learners to link the new information with previous one and that must be supported with examples. The best example is that if I give one example of a concept, then you will give another example of that concept that helps the students to comprehend the phenomena in a better way. Responding or giving answers in a classroom is not a true indicator of learning. That's what we do in recapitulation when we go for lesson planning, etc., or teaching practice in BI, or even in formal classes also in schools. If a student is able to give me answer, I assume that my teaching is perfect. No, ask them to frame a question for that concept. For example, whatever I have discussed with you people, if I keep myself mute for seconds and I ask you to frame some questions based on our discussion hitherto till now, then see the tsunami in your mind that goes on because it requires certain degree of focusing. The diverse thinking, thinking becomes converged and we get adhered to one concept and we try to frame questions on that. 
those aspects must be uh, addressed by the learners by framing the questions by focusing on what aspects of a phenomena how aspects of a phenomena why aspects of a phenomena if a student frames a question based on what what is this what is that it's the lowest level of understanding but if the student frames the question pertaining to how aspect that's the highest as the indicator of learning but the why aspect science in between but do you remember we need to start from what why and then how so don't ignore what aspect also if a student is able to answer that you will see also grammatical mistake in question framing also and you cannot say since i am a science teacher or i am english teacher i am a mathematics teacher it doesn't belong to me no we have to look into that because language is a tool every discipline requires language Cognitism and teaching are concerned that things should be explained meaningfully in us. Don't give them polished information. Let them explore also. Ask them to frame question. Ask them to give example, and then proper comprehension on the part of learner take place. And wherever possible, uh, ask them to relate the phenomena with society also. Say. photosynthesis when we discuss in classes uh, higher classes how photosynthesis is essential for society the person may be shocked photosynthesis society how are they linked yes they are linked because when plants undergo photosynthesis they will release oxygen and hence it will lead to better life of the society so we should plant more trees that's it so link the phenomena sociologically also it brings the relationship to a high, final end between school and society another is that the learner should be motivated to explore and interact with the environment don't keep themselves within the classroom i was shocked school teachers teach structure of flower on board why don't we go to garden and let them have some flower pluck and dissect them what is this what is that etc we provide them directly the harmful effects of pollution etc why don't we ask them to their recall their own experiences and classify them as harmful effects of pollution or say these cannot be classified as, as these aspects so that discrimination tendency among the learner is developed so you see when these much cognitive exercises are practiced in the classroom then we can say an effective teaching has taken place and a meaningful learning on the part of learner has taken place so dear friends what do we conclude now cognitivism is a branch a discipline the way that focuses on all mentalistic events and characterizes us at least as human beings and it requires assimilation accommodation attention etc as an important parameters to work upon learners must be dealt with the phenomena assuming that they are humans they have feelings they have emotions they should not be compelled to retrieve as an element required if they are able to comprehend well by linking the information previously then we should we should assume that learner has done well teacher should give the information supported with certain examples and questions and in turns expect expect and ask them to frame some question and give them an example only then a meaningful teaching learning takes place thank you